In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to make a useful correlation table in Microsoft Excel. I wanted to first show you that when you do this in Jump, it provides the information that you need, but it can be a bit overwhelming. In this case, I have the bankruptcy data and I want to show a correlation matrix so I can go multivariate, multivariate, select all of the data except the validation data and press OK. And then what comes up is lots of information and there is a little bit of color coding in here. So you have you have some of the darker values in dark blue, but it's a bit overwhelming. And so I like to have less digits. I like to see just the data down the diagonal and don't like to see it doubled up. And I like to see some color coding. So let's do it in Excel and make this go a lot faster and easier. And you'll be a bit more satisfied with the presentation of the data. First, I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's cleaned up. So you can see the benefits of cleaning it up and then I'll show you how to produce it. So I wrote a macro that will take this information that is produced by Excel's correlation matrix routine and it will clean it up. It will remove this unneeded row right here. It will remove the unneeded column right here. It will get rid of all of these ones down the diagonal because any column correlated with itself is always going to produce a one. And so that's just distracting information. And we don't need all of these digits after the decimal. We only need a couple of digits after the decimal place. I've also gone in and dummied in some data. The bankruptcy data did not have very many negative correlations. So I put some in just so you can see how things color differently when you have strong negative correlations than when you have strong positive correlations. Running this now. It asks me how wide I want the columns. I'll say five. All right, so it went through and got rid of all of the extra mess and it also color saturated. The more blue it is, the more the stronger the blue saturation, the stronger the correlation. So you can see that we have some very strong positive correlations and some moderate. These are greater than the plus 0.75 and these are greater than 0.85 and you can see these are very blue. These are very strong negative and so here's some that are greater than a negative 0.75 or stronger than a negative 0.75 and we also some that are also have some that are stronger than negative 0.85 like there's a negative 0.99 there. So this presentation makes it very easy for the eye to follow through and look and see where we have multicollinearity, collinearity problems that we want to address and we don't have to fight through all of that information. We can quickly zoom in on the stuff that matters. All right, so how do we build this then? First, let's go to the bankruptcy data and let's create a correlation table. The way we do this is go to the data tab, go to the data analysis, and then select correlation. It selects all the data because my cursor was in it, so it selects the contiguous data. Labels are in the first row. Let it put the data out to a new worksheet ply. So as when it produces the correlation table, it will do it on a new worksheet. Here it is. Again, I made a version of this that was dummied up so that it had some negatives, some strong negatives in here. So we'll grab all of that data. And then basically, once you're on the tab that you want to be on, you can just set your focus in there. You can just make one of the cells active in there where your correlation tables are. It's in here. It's just hiding some of the information because the column widths aren't very wide. So at that point then we can go to our developer tab and we can go to macros, run the macro, set the column widths, and there you go. So you can use the macro in this example workbook to help you create useful correlation tables in Excel.